And so associated to this data, uh, the theory of the HL topology gives you a fundamental group, which is a profinite group. So it's an inverse limit of finite groups. And if you want to describe a profinite group, all you need to do is specify what the finite sets are which are equipped with an action of this group. So the definition is as follows. Finite sets with an action of this group. This category is sort of naturally equivalent, essentially by definition, to the category of finite etal covers of x. So once again, if you're not an algebraic geometer, this simply, in the, in the world of topology, this is just a covering space with finite fibers. Um, OK, and so what does this group look like? So the basic theorem is that if you're working with the complex numbers, then you sort of have this, this space, x of c. So it's just the variety x thought of as a complex variety now, so as an as a honest topological space in the Euclidean topology. And then the theorem is that this group, which is purely algebraically constructed, is the profinite completion of the usual one. So I'll write that as pi 1 top. And so an example within the example, if in this notation I take C to be P1, so it's a, it's a sphere. It has no topological fundamental group. And so C bar is going to be P1 with two points identified, say, 0 and infinity. So you have a sphere, and you pinch two points together. And so that you produce one circle. So this group. It's sort of free on one generator, but it's profinite, so it's z hat, which is the profinite completion of z. On the other hand, one also has certain other invariants one can define in algebraic geometry, which are not somehow uh, profinite. So that's the second set of invariants I want to talk about is local systems. So for this, I need to fix a prime number L. All constructions take place relative to this prime number. And so associated to this prime, one has sort of the ring QL. This is the ring of, uh, sorry, it's a field uh, of l integers, or l numbers. And once you make this choice, one can define the following category, which plays a rather important role in arithmetic geometry. So this is going to be all QL local systems on X. So the definition of this object is kind of complicated, and I, I don't really want to get into it. I might try to actually say a few words about it later. But I, I'll try to give you examples of what it looks like. Um, it, it, so once again, if you have a nice smooth manifold, this is supposed to be the algebraic analog of the usual topological notion of a local system. So for each point of the manifold, you have a QL vector space. And as you, as, a sort of, as you move between points, you have isomorphisms, and they're all sort of coherent. So it's a locally constant sheaf, if you like. So example, if x is c bar, so my c bar up, well, OK, not quite here, what used to be here. So I no longer assume that the curve is genus uh, 0. So this is c mod ab. And then one can describe this category in a nice way. So whenever you have a local system on C bar, you can pull it back to C, and you get a local system on C. And this is designed to be functorial in that sense. And moreover, because you identified the two points, you get an isomorphism between them. So you can describe this category as a category of pairs, like so. So L is going to be a local system on the, on the smooth curve upstairs. And then you give yourself an isomorphism between the two fibers. Oh, sorry. Log C of QL. Um, and the thing I want to emphasize is that, so I'm doing everything with QL coefficients. And so this isomorphism is an isomorphism of QL vector spaces. There are no finiteness conditions on it. And now here comes the problem that I'm trying to solve. So if you do algebraic topology, there's a sort of natural correspondence between local systems on a topological space and representations of the fundamental group. You might expect something similar is true here. 
And it is to some extent. If you have a representation of this fundamental group, you do get a local system, but you don't get all of them. There is a constraint. So the observation. So this is the, the category of continuous representations of this group on QL vector spaces. Since, I'm, since the group has a topology, one really needs to sort of work with continuous representations. Uh, and it's, it's not that hard to convince yourself that there's a embedding, sort of fully faithful functor, which takes this category and produces a local system. This is very similar to what happens in topology, but unlike the topological case, this is not an isomorphism. There are sort of more objects on this side than on this side, and it's very easy to see where they come from. So for example, if x is p1 mod 0 infinity, we can sort of understand both sides. So this, remember, I said that this group was just z hat. So here I have QL representations of z hat. On the other hand, what do I get over here? Well, I get a local system on P1, which is no information essentially, because P1 is simply connected. And I get an isomorphism between the fibers over zero and infinity. This is an isomorphism of QL vector spaces. There's no condition on it. So the right-hand side is representations of Z. And it's easy to convince yourself that these two are not the same. You have a representation of Z on a one-dimensional QL vector space given by, say, 1 over L. And that doesn't come from a representation of Z hat because this group is compact. So I would like to define a fundamental group which sort of gets around this issue. So the, it should produce for me an answer which is Z, not Z hat, when I apply to a nodal P1. And uh, yeah, OK. So one can do this. And our solution is somehow similar to what happens with the construction of the Atel fundamental group. To define that, one needs the notion of the Atel topology. And then you work with things which are locally constant in the Atel topology. So what we do is we define a sort of new growth in the topology on the category of schemes, which is the pro etal topology. And this group naturally sort of falls out of the formalism. And I can't sort of tell you too much about the pro etal topology because it will take too long. But I can sort of tell you the main definitions. Um, so this is, in order for this definition, you really have to work with schemes. Even if you start off with varieties, to sort of work with this topology, you, you run into things which are not varieties anymore. So a map is weakly et al. This is going to replace the notion of et al if it satisfies the following two properties. So if f is flat and the diagonal of f is flat. And uh, I'll, I'll say a few words about where this definition is coming from. And then similarly to the etal topology, one has the pro-etal topology, where instead of working with schemes which are etal over y or x, you work with schemes which are weakly etal over x. And there's a standard way of making this into a topology, but it, I, I don't really want to get into it. Um, the thing I want to emphasize is that if you put in a finite presentation constraint, so if you work with, if you get a, sort of restrict yourself to working in the world of varieties, then this would just recover the notion of being a tell. But since I don't put any finite presentation constraints, I have a lot more objects, and therefore I have a lot more covers to work with. So things can be locally constant in this topology without being locally constant in the a tell topology. So there's a lot of, I mean, there are a lot of foundational theorems one can prove about this, and I'll just say what one of them, which is probably the most important one, which is that uh, this topology is locally contractible in a certain sense. So you can define for what it means for an object in a site to be locally contractible, and this topology does have enough locally contractible objects. To the best of my knowledge, none of the other sort of standard topologies one comes across in algebraic geometry have this property. And this is what makes a lot of the proofs easier. And so I'm going to define my fundamental group using this topology. And I'll sort of tell you what it looks like. So 
x and x is going to be a connected variety, say, and little x is a point on it. And then in, in, in the HL topology, one works with the category of finite HL covers. So you have covering spaces with finite fibers. Uh, in this pro HL topology, one sort of relaxes the finiteness condition. So this is all locally constant sheaves of sets. And I'll say sort of what this means. On this pro HL side. So I mean, if you're familiar with the formalism of site, all I'm saying is that I have a sheaf on this category, and there is a cover over which it looks like the constant sheaf associated to a set. But the set need not be finite. And you have this functor, omega x, which just takes a sheaf like this and produces a set by evaluating it at this point. So these are the basic objects, and here's the group. So pi 1 pro et al of x, x is the automorphism group of this functor. So what do I mean? I mean, for each object of this category, I have to specify an automorphism of its fiber. And these automorphisms have to be compatible with the structure of a category. And one needs to put a topology on this. So it's topologized using uh, the compact open topology on, on the automorphism group of a set. So once again, for each object of this category, I have an automorphism of the set, which is its fiber. And so there's a map from this group to the automorphism group of the fiber. I have the compact open topology on the automorphism group of an infinite set, and I just pull it back. So that's the group. It's very sort of natural from the point of view of this topology. And then the theorem is the following, and I'll stop after that. So there's a couple of parts to it. So first of all, it solves the problem I set out to solve, which is that the QL representations of this group give me all local systems. So I don't miss any like, the, like I did with the HL fundamental group. Um, this group recovers the HL fundamental group, so you aren't losing information. So the usual HL fundamental group is profinite. And so there's a natural operation which takes a topological group and produces a profinite group which is profinite completion. And if you apply this to this pro italic fundamental group, you get the etal fundamental group. Uh, and finally, this is somehow the key geometric result, uh, which sort of lets us prove anything, is that uh, there's a nice description of this category of, of this category loc x. So this is a priori just some sheaf theoretic notion, but th there's actually some geometry in it. So this category loc x is equivalent to the category of all Atal maps of schemes. So now you actually have a geometric object that satisfy the value of the criterion. So something that looks like a covering space, except you don't specify that the fibers are finite. The value of the criterion is the algebraic geometry way of saying that there are no holes upstairs and you haven't done some sort of unnecessary gluing. Um, and so using this, you can sort of fairly easily convince yourself that these things are true. Uh, and I've run out of time, so I'll stop here. Thank you.